Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you exactly how to utilize the green manure method of cover cropping. So I'm going to say some things about it here, and then I'm going to take you in the field and show you a full year example, utilizing several of the consulting trips that I've done to Tennessee to show you from seed to harvest. Now, there are essentially two types of cover cropping. There is the no-till method of cover cropping that you've seen from the last video that I made. And then there is the green manure cover cropping, in which case we use tillage. We turn in the cover crop. Now, there are pros and cons to them both. And the primary ones are this, that in the no-till method, you must terminate the cover crop at exactly the right time to keep it from growing back. And for that reason, you can only plant a certain type of the heat loving stuff uh, with most of the cover crops. Ultimately, this is the best method to go because it is no till that will produce the finest quality soil and microorganism relationship in the long run. But here is what happens to so many uh, uh, no till gardeners, despite their best intentions. I see it all the time. They put down cardboard, then compost, and then start no till immediately. And what happens is that they end up with just a couple inches, an inch or two of compost or organic matter on top of rock hard clay that the roots can't penetrate and that the air can't penetrate and they have poor dismal results because the, the roots just don't penetrate that. So for the first couple of seasons, it can be very beneficial to utilize the green manure crop in which we use the tillage because that is going to help to break up that hard pan that is going to get the organic matter in there. And as you will see in the video, it supercharges the life in the soil. So the two, um, uh, main advantages to the green manure crop is that it doesn't depend on uh, a certain timing of termination. You can terminate it at any point along the way. So you can plant your cabbages, your cauliflower, the cold hardy stuff. You can plant that. As opposed to the no-till, you have to wait until just the right time. Therefore, it's pretty much only heat loving stuff that you're utilizing with, with like winter rye and the clovers and stuff. Uh, the second advantage is that it really helps to whip uh, virgin soil into shape like Indiana clay, man, you want to get a couple of seasons of this green manure in there. And that's really going to help to establish a good soil structure. So let us get into it, my friends. Okay, my friends, in order to utilize the green manure crop on a fresh plot, we are going to de-establish the grass that is there. If you already have a, a, a garden, then you can skip this step, but I'm going to show you two useful methods. So here we have access to the heavy machinery. So we're going to use that to till in about four to six inches deep, and that's going to uh, till up the roots and de-establish the grass that is already there. Do not think you're going to plant into established grass and have this work. It won't. So here is another option. If you don't have the heavy machinery, you can take leaves and rake them into the exact shape of the garden beds that you want. Now leaves are going to be great because they are full of the minerals. Then we're going to take the dragon's breath, the torch, and we are going to gently ignite the side that is going into the wind. So you see how the uh, wind is carrying the flame across the pile. Now this is a quick flash burn. This is only 30, 45 minutes, give or take. And in that time, it gets just hot enough to kill off the grass, kill off the weed seeds and to uh, leave behind this rich layer of ashes, this um, uh, minerals that was contained within the leaves. People have been doing this for thousands of years in this exact method, guys, with the fire. It's very beneficial. But no matter what you use, which method you want to, the next step is the same. You utilize the cover crop. Plant it immediately. Don't wait around because stuff will grow back immediately. So here we're going to utilize the uh, crimson clover. Guys, I always recommend a clover. Uh, a legume of some type because it uh, adds so much rich nitrogen to the soil. So here we have added our crimson clover cover crop and then rake it in. And so here we are the following spring. This is about April time and you can see that the crimson clover has become nice and thick and luscious. Look at all that biomass we have grown. Now here's what you want to look for. You want your cover crop to begin to flower, but you don't want it to seed. If it gets to seed, then they can be a little bit persistent. So you see here the crimson clover, when we take our thumbnail, uh, there's no little black seeds that are falling out. And so this is actually the perfect time. There's going to be the maximum amount of nutrients involved here. So now we are going to till it all in. And this is the uh, foundation of the green manure type method is that we are going to take all of that biomass and we are going to incorporate it into the soil. And this is the magic, guys. It uh, supercharges the life in the soil. All the bacteria is going to go to and the fungi, the microorganisms going to go to work immediately uh, digesting and decomposing this stuff, making it plant available. 
Now, we took all the brush and sticks and we put it into a big pile, guys, and we're burning it because we're going to incorporate that into the soil. Look at all that luscious biomass. And this is the main advantage of the green manure is that it's all right here. We didn't have to transport thousands of pounds of manure or thousands of pounds of uh, anything. We just had one bag of seeds and we plant that out. Now, we're going to let this fire die down. Uh, until it's completely out and then we are just going to rake it out and incorporate that the ashes because that is exactly where the tomatoes are going to go and they're going to love the ashes the minerals so you see what it's doing uh, uh, to the soil now this is going to decompose very quickly guys much quicker than you might think and so you are going to want to have your mulching system ready to go all right do not leave it exposed to the elements like this for too long they do that on an industrial scale but on the home garden the food security garden it's different you want to get that stuff covered so for us for this system it's best utilizing different types of fabrics here we have some coal mine conveyor belt because that's what was available on the farm and abundant and it's nearly permanent uh, yes, it's very laborious to work with, very heavy, but once it's in place, it's going to make ideal uh, pathways. So here's a different type of mulching that we've used uh, is the plastic sheeting. And you, you can use organic matter if you have a small scale, but you would be hard pressed to find this much organic matter to use it effectively in this way. So we use the plastic sheeting and we're going to add more fertility right where the squash are going to go. And this is going to be everything that the plants need, guys. So here is a, a month or so later, the Tahitian melons just starting to take hold. Here they are a couple months into the summertime. And then we are going to have a nice, beautiful harvest of the Tahitian melon and the Jaradale squash. Look at the size of that Tahitian squash, guys. Stores all winter long. Really nice and flavorful. Here's a butternut that we had. Now, here is the infamous Jenny, and she is planting the glass gem corn. And yes, you can plant seeds directly into this. They will find their way out. And this is in the same style. We use the green manure, till it in, and put the sheet over it. And look at that. A couple months later, everything's starting to grow well. And the kids are happy playing in the corn. Everybody's happy. And then several months later, look at how massive this glass gem corn is, guys, because it had everything it needed and no weed competition. This glass gem is going to be delicious as corn grits, corn meal, all kinds of good stuff. So here we are uh, on the same trip. We're getting everything planted because you want to get everything planted within a week or so of tilling it in there because uh, you want to lock them nutrients into the soil and get everything established. And it helps if you have some real deal workers. Yes, Jenny is the real deal. And uh, here we are getting everything. This is the final look. So here we have the, the peppers here. We have the uh, tomatoes on the left. We have the okra planted over here. And now here we are a couple of months later and the tomatoes are beginning to grow nice and luscious. And uh, they have everything that they need. Their roots can spread out. They've got all the nutrients they need. Same is true with the cabbages on the right and the onions on the left. Everything is starting to grow well. Here we are a few months later, and look, everything is beautiful. Very little weed pressure. These cabbages are doing great. They're loving life because there's no weed pressure, and they got everything that they need to grow healthy. He used zero pesticides, not even the J-Dom, and look at how healthy this cabbage is, guys. Because it has everything it needs. It can defend itself. And uh, yes, made tons of delicious sauerkraut in there. And everything is looking good. So uh, here we are again with the peppers and the okra area. Now the peppers have just started their life here. They got twice and three times that size. Look at the okra over here. And the corn we're planting in succession. The summer squash have been yielding tons of stuff. Guys, look how healthy those summer squash are. Enormous, dark green. And the only thing he gave it was a few of the aerated compost teas from the special recipes that I have given to him. He applied that just a handful of times, but that's all that it needed. And it's for the microbiology. Look at that microbiology. That is the key, guys. So between the green manure and just a handful of the um, aerated compost teas, this garden is absolutely just amazing. It's pretty much what everybody dreams of as a garden because you plant it and there's a very little pressure, uh, weed pressure, and you're just harvesting, making tons of salsa making tons of the good stuff, guys. And this is what's possible by utilizing these methods. So there you go, my friends. If you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge and also share your experience with the cover crops. What kind of cover crops have you planted? Do you green manure? Do you no-till? What uh, Say what zone you're in, where you're at, and what you have planted. People love to get that kind of knowledge by reading through the comments. 
So, uh, also, we will see you right here every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time for a live Q&A. And I will direct you to this video here if you wish to see the no-till method of cover cropping in the home garden.